coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. LX7 breaks time and speed records. King Schools updates their Cessna learning and tracking platform. And Epic Aircraft receives FAA production certificate. Happy Friday and welcome to the show. I'm your host, Sophie Herlock. Whoever said records are made to be broken must have known something about RDD, an experimental aircraft manufacturer from Redmond, Oregon. In March of this year, just before COVID-19 quarantines went into place, Oregon resident Paul Hodge piloted his LX-7 personal aircraft from Redmond, Oregon to Anchorage in just six hours, setting a new all-time record for that distance. Hodge's LX-7's average airspeed was almost 269 miles an hour with standard range, making his trip easy despite less than favorable winds. To prove his flight time of six hours wasn't a fluke, Hodge hopped back into his LX-7 a few days later to fly back to Redmond, making it there in just five and a half hours with an average speed of 317 miles an hour, breaking his own previous record. The LX-7 piston-powered aircraft is able to climb at a rate of 2,000 feet per minute, has a fuel capacity of 180 gallons, and can travel a total of 2,125 nautical miles in as little as eight and a half hours. We'll be right back with Around the Patch. Affordable and economical, Pipistrol is proud to present the Alpha Trainer. The aircraft can use as little as 2.5 gallons per hour in a flight school setting with multiple students and instructors each day. This means that 13.2 gallons of fuel can effectively give you as much as five hours of endurance. Learn more about what the Pipistrel Alpha Trainer can do for you at pipistrel-usa.com. If it looks good, it usually flies good. The Bristel series of aircraft is proof of that. Furthering their legacy of safety and efficiency, Bristel is proud to feature the Rotax 915 IS Turbo in the current lineup of aircraft. The 915 IS Turbo power plant offers more power than ever before in a light sport aircraft. Learn more about Bristel at www.sportflyingusa.com. Well, hello, fellow pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. Welcome back. It's time for today's trip around the patch. On Tuesday, the FAA stated they plan to issue a notice of proposed rulemaking for an airworthiness directive affecting the Boeing 737 MAX. The agency also stated they will allow a 45-day public comment period on the proposed design changes and crew procedures to mitigate the safety issues identified during their investigation. The FAA is continuing to follow a robust certification process, and while the posting of the NPRM is an important milestone, there are still a number of key steps left in their process. Only a couple of weeks after reopening borders to international visitors, the Bahamas closed all of its airports and seaports to visitors from the United States on Wednesday. The decision to close the borders was made due to the increase in COVID-19 cases in the United States, as well as an uptick in cases in the Bahamas. Outgoing commercial flights are still permitted to accommodate any tourists who were scheduled to leave the Bahamas after Wednesday. And some general and business aviation flights will be allowed as well. Additionally, travelers from the EU, Canada, and the UK will still be allowed to visit the Bahamas as long as they can show proof of a negative COVID-19 test taken within 10 days of their arrival. If you are missing Oshkosh this week, you can now purchase your EAA AirVenture admissions, camping, parking, flight experience, and merchandise for AirVenture Oshkosh 2021 on the EAA's website. Next year's Air Venture will be held from Monday, July 26th to Sunday, August 1st at Whitman Regional Airport. NASA astronauts Robert Benkin and Chris Cassidy completed their Tuesday spacewalk at 12.41 p.m. after 6 hours and 29 minutes, bringing their total spacewalk count to 10 for each of them. The astronauts completed a number of tasks designed to upgrade the International Space Station systems, beginning with installing a protective storage unit 
that includes two robotic external link locator units. They ended their spacewalk by preparing the outside of the Tranquility module for the arrival of the Nanorak commercial airlock on a SpaceX cargo delivery mission later this year. We'll be right back with the rest of the news. We spent days flying and burning fuel and experiencing the new Swift fuel. I'm pretty dang impressed. I mean, to come out with a high octane replacement fuel with no lead, that's a tall order. If they continue to go the way they're going, Swift fuel will have a replacement fuel of the market. It's better for the environment. It's cleaner on your engine. That's game changer. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Schools has updated their Cessna flight training system to make learning easier and more fun for future pilots, particularly in the sport and private pilot course, instrument rating course, and companion apps. Some of the new features in this upgrade include updated navigation, design, and functionality for iPhones, iPads, laptops, and desktops. Flight instructors will also see major modifications to features in the course tracking application. The CTA tracks individual student training progress online, offline, and even in the air, using an iPad app that syncs the offline progress to the system whenever the instructor reconnects to the internet. King Schools and the Cessna Aircraft Company have had a 24-year partnership, collaborating on combining flight lesson tracking at the flight school with home study courses for learning pilots creating the first fully integrated computer-based flight training system. The current roster of courses include private pilot, instrument rating, multi-engine, commercial, and CFI. Epic Aircraft has received their FAA production certificate for the E-1000 all-carbon fiber six-seat single-engine turboprop. This allows Epic to accelerate aircraft deliveries by enabling them to manufacture, flight test, and issue airworthiness certificates with reduced FAA presence. The company's pursuit of FAA production certification started years ago in tandem with its type certification program, which concluded in November of 2019. Epic was scheduled several months ago to complete the FAA production audit when the COVID-19 pandemic disrupted plans as FAA mandated travel limitations restricted on-site visits, which are typically essential to the PC approval process. However, this didn't stop Epic and they collaborated with the FAA to create a new process, using remote technology to conduct the required series of reviews and audits prior to the final on-site assessment, with plans to now further accelerate production schedules. And that wraps up our week, everyone. We appreciate you tuning in. And if you enjoyed today's episode, be sure to click the like button and subscribe so you can receive notifications when new videos are posted. You can also check us out on Facebook and on Twitter. And head over to aero-news.net for the latest aviation and aerospace news anytime of the day. Have a great weekend. I'll see you Monday.